So what I want to talk briefly about tonight is the Section 106 mitigation that has been going on for a pretty intensely for a couple months. Um, just want to give you a summary of that process and where we are because things are going to get sticky or I'll even go as far as to say the word ugly. Okay, so just to give you a quick summary, if you're not familiar with Section 106, uh, during the EIS process that the Navy went through to um, determine the environmental impact on uh, the increased noise because of the increased jets, part of that, there's a special thing called the Section 106 where you look at the adverse effects uh, of the noise strictly on historic properties and historic properties only. It's a whole separate process. The Navy has prepared an entirely separate 264 page document to deal with the adverse effects, uh, to determine whether there were any adverse effects be, um, on historic properties because of the noise. And the Navy came back and said, yes, there were adverse effects. Um, they have identified five very special little areas where they feel like these um, adverse effects are happening. Um, Section 106 mitigation, the Navy, if they find adverse effects, they are supposed to, in good faith, uh, work with the public and with the, stake, with the stakeholders, and it's supposed to be a public process, to try and come up with some mitigation um, to make up for, let's say, the adverse effects. Obviously, what we started out saying for is, well, the only way you can truly mitigate this is not do the extra noise. You can imagine how far we got in that conversation. Um, the, nothing was done on Section 106, and then just a couple of months ago, all of a sudden they came out with this, um, you know, like a first draft of mitigation. The, and, and have they've been in a big hurry to finish this process. Uh, they would, and the reason they're in a hurry is they would like to have, what, what this will hopefully result in is a memorandum of understanding between the Navy and the stakeholders, uh, an agreement of mitigation. They would like to have that finalized and be a part of the final EIS before the record of decision is officially signed. They don't have to, but it's pretty unusual not to have your um, Section 106 mitigation included in your final EIS. Um, so there are a lot of stakeholders, there are a lot of parties of record. We have been having meetings and hours long conference calls with all the stakeholders and I, I just want to tell you, you know, I want you to understand how many people have put dozens of hours into this process. So I have been representing the town, Kristen Griffith, Wilbur, Wilbur Bishop and Fan Einhurst have been representing the reserve. Uh, Commissioner Helen Price Johnson is, has been representing her district for Island County. Um, Roy Zip has been in the meetings for the National Park Service. Marion Atwood from CORE. Um, Captain Arnie and Kendall Campbell from the base. Kendall Campbell is, Campbell is the historic resource person at the base. Dr. Allison Brooks has been involved. Uh, she's from the state SHPO office. Um, various people from the governor's office have come and gone and from the DAP offices and we're talking dozens of people from the Navy. When we're on these conference calls, there's people at the base on the phone, there's people at the Northwest region on the phone, and there's people in Washington DC on the phone. Dozens of Navy people. I am just going to put it out there and say in, uh, that I believe the Navy waited way too long to start this process and now they're trying to really rush it through. Um, they started the conversation by presenting a couple ideas for mitigation. Uh, all of the stakeholders were really quick to say we are absolutely not interested in those things you're, you're offering us. They aren't true mitigation. They don't really serve the purpose of what Section 106 is about, and months later, here we are, and that's still what's on the draft MOA. We have given, I think, a lot of really creative ideas to the Navy um, of different mitigation they can they could consider, and we just haven't gotten anywhere. Um, we 
And when I say we, let me give Kristen Griffith a, a lot of credit for the Kristen Griffith, a lot of credit for this. She is came to the reserve. She is a Section 106 expert. She knows the language. She knows the purpose of it. She knows what mitigation is supposed to look like. She knows what mitigation has looked like in many other communities. And she is our steady, calm voice through this and has come up with the most uh, interesting options for mitigation that w when she says them, all the rest of the partners just jump on board and go, yeah, that's a great idea, and then we don't get anywhere. Um, the thing that, I think the, the thing that Kristen the, the Kristen has said to me that's been the most meaningful and I like to try and keep in the forefront when we're having these discussions is that Section 106 mitigation should focus on on the public. It should focus on what mitigation, the public is going to be affected by the noise, what mitigation can the, can the Navy do that would have the most benefit for the public as a whole that it should the the mitigation is affecting the reserve which is a which is a the central would be historic district so it we should look for mitigation that helps the district and therefore helps the model you know the all four partners of the reserve um, because that's really who's trying to protect the historic resources of the district um, but again we haven't gotten very far I haven't really talked about this a lot with you to date because I was truly, truly hoping that I would be able to bring you, uh, you know, that we would get to the point where we had an, a memorandum of understanding that all the stakeholders felt better about uh, before they asked us to sign it. I, I was really hoping that that would happen, but it just really doesn't look like it's going to happen. And then without any notice to the stakeholders, the Navy put out a press release yesterday and sent the draft MOU out and made it public. And it is a draft that none of the stakeholders are happy with. I'm, I have said to my stakeholder partners, and I said on the conference call today to the captain, that if this is the, the MOU that is put before the town of Coopville, I will recommend to the town of council that we decline to sign it. It is so, it, it, it feels to me like such a disingenuous attempt at, at negotiation. Um, and quite frankly, we don't have much to lose because there's not that much in it. Um, we don't feel that the money they have offered for the mitigation for the programs is substantial enough for the amount of money that is being put into this new mission um, and that the the things they are offering to spend money on are not um, our community's priorities. They don't have anything to do with the community's priorities. Right now, what that, what the, and so I wanted to, I, I needed to tell you about this in case you get questions about this MOU. The timing is very, in my opinion, very unfortunate also because you know, anytime the Navy puts out a press release and they start talking about mitigation, there's no, it's a very short, I will shoot, I should have brought you a copy of the press release. I will send it to you. However, the web, the, the link to hook up to the MOU does not work in the press release. I, I was on the phone with the Navy and you can do contortions and get on three different websites and finally bear down on it. Oh, I gave you a copy of the, um, the draft M MOU right now, but yeah, so you have it. Um, basically what it boils down to, they are offering to give money for a grant program, and they're going to give the money to the National Park Service. Do You will see this as a running thing. Um, all monies are going to be given to the National Park Service, which is a problem for many of us. Um, they're not talking about, they said they wanted to use the Friends of EB's criteria to, to use this grant money, but they're not really naming, other than they're going to give the money to the National Park Service, they're not really, um, there's no model. They're not saying how this is really going to happen, how the money will actually get from the National Park Service out to um, the community. And 
we while we all uh, I really respect what Friends of Evie's has done with their Friends of Evie's grant program. It's just amazing. They hit a million dollars in grants last year. Um, a lot of that is for private property, and we real and that's great because private property owners need that. But in this case, for growler mitigation, for historic resources, we feel as stakeholders that the emphasis needs to um, be focused on public facilities and minimizing noise impact. Right. That's it could yes. Uh, in those historic buildings. Uh, we well we've come up with some different we've come up with some different ideas. Um, the second thing they're offering is money, again paid to the National Park Service, for to complete a professional cultural landscape inventory. Okay, from the very first meeting, we were very clear that EB's Reserve has a wonderful uh, inventory of our historic resources, and that in 2015, it was just completely updated. Yeah. And so we have said over and over and over again, not only does this not need to be done, this is, a pri this is not a priority, we don't consider it mitigation, and we really don't want that to happen. Because of course they were gonna pay a Navy person to, to do the inventory. And then on this draft that came out publicly, maybe it's always been there but and I didn't see it before there was a comment in there that um, the Navy would use the results of this inventory as a baseline for future inventories and evaluations if the Navy needs to use an inventory for future evaluations and a baseline there is we already have one that, that is our community's priorities and what we have protected the third thing they're offering to give money is money to the National Park Service again for a southern gateway to the reserve. Now, National Park Service does want this southern gateway. The rest of the partners don't agree with that. It, we did years ago have on a work uh, a work order schedule to some to have a southern gateway to the reserve. That is no longer a priority to the rest of the partners. Um, and the Southern Gateway to the Reserve would be at OLF. So we How question. That? How is that mitigation? It, well, it's sometimes mitigation. Okay, sometimes mitigation can't be actually to mitigate for like the noise itself, but you can do mitigation that helps your historic properties. This isn't. This isn't either one of those. I'm not disagreeing with you. This isn't either one of those. I'm just saying that NPS, uh, the local representative of NPS wants this. Mm. The rest of the partners um, are not supportive of this as mitigation. Um, we also feel that things have now changed and where the Southern Gateway was going to be will now be under an, an APZ. So we question the logic of creating a gathering place in an APC in the future. This is basically what they started out offering and where we still are today. Um, and I, I just feel like I, I don't really have anything. I just wanted to bring you up to date on the process. We've, it's been very frustrating and disappointing and I, I don't know where it's going to go. They are really focused on getting this done in a hurry. But um, if, they, if they don't have people to sign it, is it able to get done? Okay, here's the thing with Section 106, like all things Navy. They don't need our approval to do it. Um, I said on the phone that to this morning that at this point I would recommend the town not signing it. Uh, the state SHPO representative this morning said she wouldn't sign it. The trust board um, has met tonight and said that they won't sign it. Um, Helen was not on the phone call today, but she knew what it was yesterday when we met with a representative from McLarson's office about this, and she was not in favor of it. Um, but you know what? Uh, if who really needs to sign it is SHPO, and if they don't sign it, 
there's a national advisory board, there's one level up, that can choose to sign it or not. But ultimately, I don't think it really matters. Does it matter, Kristen? I don't think it really matters. Do you want, do you want me to answer? Or? Yes. Okay. All right. So, so um, what Section 106 is a mandated review process. So it says that the federal agency has to consider the effects of their actions on the historic properties. So their obligation is to complete the process. Um, uh, and um, uh, it is, however, very, 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 very rare um, to not have one of these memorandums of agreement go all the way to completion. Usually there is some uh, way of doing that. So there's a lot of interest on the federal <coughs> side in having it uh, be concluded. But, you know, as, as you said, I mean, the, the trust board tonight, it was unanimous. They also have no support for the current draft um, uh, MOA, and then we have some further advice for them, you know, for the rest of the consultation. So. Could, could I ask, uh, clarify, did you say that most Section 106s are concluded they are. with the signatures? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so this is a bit of an anomaly. It, it is, and you know, I have decades of experience. I've never been through one that's uh, as intense as this one is, um, or uh, looks like it's headed for some kind of a major change. There was a whole new group and a new level of people from Washington, D.C. on the phone this morning. Uh, I think they, they see the direction this is heading. However, it's not, it's not having an impact on what is ending up ultimately on, yeah. on the mitigation document. So the, I think the significance is the Section 106 is actually a separate uh, law from the EIS process, mm -hmm. which is the NAF, you know, NEPA. So, uh, but they need to conclude this to move on uh, with what needs to happen with the EIS. So that's the, the tension there, is that... And so, um, and the conclusion may be, yeah, no yeah. mitigation, no, no consensus, no mitigation. Correct. That could be the, that could be the... But there's quite a bit of process. I mean, like the state would have to terminate their interest in the agreement. I mean, it, 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 it's complicated. And I don't know, I've, I've asked for guidance on what happens if that, if that actually occurs. And what, what is this national advisory? So there's an independent federal agency called the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. And when, when a Section 106 review is happening and you reach the point where there, yes, everyone agrees that there is going to be an adverse effect um, and there must be then a memorandum of agreement through consultation and all that, then they are um, um, have an opportunity of sitting in as one of the consulting parties on the memorandum of agreement. Um, and then if, if, if there is a need essentially for mediation, they can play that role. They also can override the state's interest. The, the, the state is also a, an assured um, consulting party on one of these if there is an adverse effect or if they're asked to participate. So. Has that ever occurred that they overrode the state interest? You know, I don't really know, but I know that it's been, um, I, I was told by the cultural resource person for the Navy that it's been 30 years since they had one that failed and um, it's outside the limit of experience of the person who's been sitting in on ours for the advisory council. And, and I want to be really clear, everybody's working, has been yeah. working really hard to come up with creative ideas, with a way, with a document that we can go back to our citizens and our residents and say, yeah. you know, look, this is not great, there, this, there is going to be noise impacts, and we worked as hard as we could, and here's, and here's some mitigation we've been able to get just for the historic resources. Uh, this is completely separate than if after the final EIS is signed, will we be able to get REPI money or something else for noise mitigation for non for homes, for homeowners. That will be a completely different process with different funds, different money, a different vehicle. This MOU is strictly for the Section 106 historic properties. 
Um, we have just, we have worked really hard. Our, Kristen came up with a fabulous um, proposal that has just gone nowhere. She came up with a working with the partners of the reserve. We came up with what uh, what we considered would be significant mitigation for all four partners for a historic, um, really landmark in our community. We came up with money for uh, for the town. I I gave more money to the port. Money money to um, go towards the wharf project, a significant amount of money to help them get that building back to a stable, safe condition. Uh, for the National Park Service, money for the ferry house. You know that a fire suppression system and some stabilization work has been a priority for that building for a long time. Uh, state parks, money for um, concrete reinforce the reinforcement of the old concrete in the gun batteries that is a, an identified priority for a state park historic mm -hmm. structures we are not just like being greedy and trying to make things up we are taking um, all all three of those are buildings of high public use high public interest and they are identified mm -hmm. projects within within the central would be historic district and have been for a long time and in our opinion would be appropriate to apply mitigation money to um, yeah. we've we've been talking about various things that the fourth partner is Island County um, since Island County doesn't technically they don't own really any historic buildings besides a couple block houses we've been trying to because we want to include all partners in this to make it truly representative of the of the historic district, um, we've been looking at uh, easement purchases or different different ways to include our county partner in this mitigation. Yeah. But it just couldn't be more night and day. Yeah. So I mean, what I would like to say is that um, it's really important to us that uh, the public not. Um, um, by seeing that this draft MOA that is was released to the public and the public was invited to comment on, that it does not reflect um, the views on mitigation of the trust board at all. Um, and that we think that the mitigation, that it's really not, it's not about the money, it's that we want to see the, uh, the focus be on the public and um, we feel especially inside this historic district that it's important um, that the mitigation reflect the priorities of the stakeholders and the local government here. So that, that's our that's our little platform on that. The, right now, the Navy's MOU uh, says that they will give money for a grant program that's not defined, and but that before any money is transferred, every grant has to be approved by the Navy. On the, on the landscape inventory, which we've already discussed, they, the Navy will use that new inventory as their point to make all further judgments on. And in the Southern Gateway, they wanted to, the Navy wants to participate in the development of the portion of the Gateway exhibit referencing Navy history. That so was just, not ever part of a program. Just to be clear, this, the first time that all the partners saw this was when it went out to the public? Um, we've seen it before. We've, but seen, we've seen it versions. before and commented negatively has changed on it. It's yeah. always been these same it's always been these same three things. Yeah, I could see the perception is worrisome. But we had no notice that this yeah. was going to go out to the public. Right. We were just we were actually <laughs> sitting in a meeting discussion, discussing the Section 106 uh, with Congressman Larson's aide, when I did I get a did I get a notice? I, I think I got an email right before I walked into the meeting saying, "How do you want us to support you on the on the on the Section 106 yeah. mitigation MOU that came out today?" Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. No notice about it. Okay. So. Um, the trust board voted tonight to send a letter to the editor 
Uh, we also will do that, yes, but um, we'll respond back to the Navy about the um, uh, where we are in terms of the draft MOU, um, and we will try to correct that public perception, because it implies that even though the signature lines are blank, it implies that those parties are, um, you know, are, are moving this idea forward. and. The press release, I do want to say, I'm so and I, I still haven't seen the press release. I may, I emailed it to you well, tonight. We had a board meeting today. I haven't, I haven't. Um, I'm so mad I didn't bring a copy of the press release. I do have to say that the press release does have a strong sentence in it. Whether this mm -hmm. gets put into a newspaper article, we don't know. But it does say have a strong sentence that says, this draft MOU has not been... Well, approved by the stakeholders or approved <coughs> by the... Yeah. But not approved is different from the fact that there's almost universal non-consensus with it. Mm -hmm. It's really different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, I, I, you know, I don't know what happened or how or why. I hope to find out, but anyway, that's, that'll be but, all. Okay, but what I want to say to, the, to my council, and I hope that I think you said the same thing for the trust board, is that I think it's important for the town to stay in the process. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to have a temper tantrum and say, I'm, we're out of here. We're not going to participate. We're not a stakeholder. I think it's important that I continue go, to go to participate in these meetings that the trust board does, that the county does, and the state park does, mm -hmm. and MPS. And that e even if the end, if we can't reach a result, I mean, it has a, a signature page for the town of Cookville. I want that signature page to stay in here. And if it's blank, or if you know, I actually write on there with your permission, decline to sign this on behalf of the town. You know, I want that. I don't want that page to go away. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. And and that's what the trust board's still going to do, right? Stay yeah. in the stay in the fight. Yeah. Stay in the game. Yes. I need further clarification on what the, the, this where this process goes, how how it works. Because like I said, I never gone down this particular road before so but I know who to ask so I, I just can't compliment Kristen enough on how she has kept people on focus and and challenged the Navy when they say no we can't do that it, it's like well yeah you actually can do that you're just choosing not to um, she's done it in a very professional uh, very professional way kept keeping her temper better than I and Dr. Books from the SHPO office have through this process. The thing is, we have professions, we have people with years of experience, we have a model nationally, and they're not even listening, they're not respecting. That's what's so frustrating to you, I know. It's, it's been a frustrating process. So um, I just, I, I feel, when it came out publicly, I feel badly that we hadn't even discussed it. But honestly, I was hoping that the first time we did discuss it, I would have something more positive to present you with. So do you guys have any questions on uh, on the process or where we're at today? We have we're to wait we'll sit down. No, I was just going to say, because we have to wait and see what you bring back to us. So. This is the first time we've seen right. this. Obviously, exactly. we're not going to act on this tonight. No. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, they're, and they're not asking us to. There's no, they're, they're not to the point of asking us to act on it. I will come back to you before that happens. Um, they have been called on the fact that uh, having these conference calls with this select group of stakeholders is not really a public process. And so I think going out with a press, well not I think, going out with a press release and sending it out to the paper is their public process. The, the press release says that this is a public process you are welcome to make comments on the MOU. But there's no context to this. It doesn't, in the press release doesn't explain what a section 106 is, doesn't explain that it only applies to historic properties. It just has, if you can find it, because the link doesn't work, if you can wind your way down on the would-be EIS uh, website, you can find it eventually. <coughs> Um, so there's just no context when they went out in public with this. And because everybody is so watching the newspapers and so alert to Navy uh, press releases because we're all waiting 
for the final record of decision on the e on the final EIS. It's just going to be a kind of it's a new thing thrown into the public and it has the potential to be confusing. So I just want to make sure you guys knew what was going on. Thank you. And thanks, Kristen, for your leadership and knowledge on this. It's really critical. 